Um, I grew up in Ann Arbor, Michigan, in an extremely proactive community, and us kids thought that we could do everything. Um, and we had extremely supportive parents that made it, they made it their lives to make our dreams possible. And so we tried every single after school program available at our school. And when I say every single program, I'm not kidding. I did knitting, karate, ice skating, crafts club, maths club, you name it, we did it. So when our school joined the largest science Olympiad um, program, the elementary science Olympiad program in the country, I joined too. My dad's an aerospace engineer, so of course he joined me up for water bottle rockets. It was a ton of fun blasting Coke bottles up into the air, and even though it was our first year, we won first. So for the rest of elementary school, I dabbled. I did tons of events. I did circuit wizardry, bridge building, estimania, but my favorite was no bones about it. Our coach was an orthopedic surgeon, and this guy absolutely loved his job. He, I remember he took us once to, um, I don't know where it was because I was a little kid, but it was on a field trip to look at real home human bones to learn from them instead of pictures. And they even had like slices of preserved human body, and I was fascinated. My coach was the best type of teacher. He was both enthusiastic and effective. I remember him telling us so many stories about screwing bones together, um, and he made fun games for us to play um, to prepare for the tournament. So the day of the competition, all the students around us, I remember in the room, were struggling. But my partner and I, we were having so much fun. We were thinking about his stories, we were laughing, and we whizzed through this test. By the end, we were sure that we'd won. And it wasn't to our surprise we won first place as the little arrogant little kids that we were. But, um, so when I entered this competition, I had no idea what it was. I did not know what no bones about it was. But by the end, I knew all the bones in the human body and that I wanted to be a doctor. I first heard about Science Olympiad at the Summer Institute for the Gifted at Princeton. I took a class called Burmese Flabbergasting Phenomenon, where we had to estimate large numbers really fast. For example, how many piano tuners are in the state of New York? Or how many gumballs will fit in this room? I actually don't know the answers to these questions, but I can assure you that I enjoyed the class. So when I had the opportunity to join my Science Olympiad team, I did. One of the three events I did my freshman year was trajectory, where we had to build a trebuchet. Basically, our goal was to transport a ping pong ball from the starting line to a certain distance. So I personally remember the hours I spent after school trying to test the device. I had to transport the machine as well as weights down two flights of stairs and chase ping pong balls for hours on end after school. This may not sound like fun at all, but when we won third place at the state competition, that was the most rewarding experience of my lifetime. In the next three years, I tried all the events, including fossils, rocks and minerals, chem lab, it's about time, and anatomy, just to name a few. So at the end of my science Olympiad career, I have tried and competed in more than three quarters of the events offered at this high school level. I accumulated five golds, eight silvers, and three bronzes. But more importantly, I had gained a thorough understanding of topics I had never before explored in school. Science Olympiad had given me that opportunity to expand my horizons. I wanted more, but I knew my Science Olympiad journey was over. Or so you thought. <laughs> In Johns Hopkins University, we discovered Charm City Science League. So CCSL is a group here that um, we focus on increasing STEM interest at the middle school level through after school programs, uh, weekly after school programs. So our two main goals are to one, foster scientific curiosity, and two, to encourage the kids to pursue what they love. Since competitions can be a great motivator, we focus our curriculum on the Maryland Science Olympiad, or MSO curriculum. So our team 
which is located at Barclay Middle School, is fully coached by Johns Hopkins students. The two of us joined CCS now as freshmen, and since the club had just started, we had a lot of flexibility. Um, it was a really small group, and we were basically able to do what we wanted um, through the club. I had enjoyed sounds and music in high school, so when I got an opportunity to share my interests with the students, I made a PVC pipe drum to play Twinkle Twinkle Little Star and a wine glass harmonica. I was personally really interested in anatomy, so I used my elementary science Olympiad coaches' resources to make Jeopardy boards for the students, and I got a few of the kids super psyched to learn about brain anatomy. Uh, I'm a neuroscience major, so that's what I was excited about. Um, and since there wasn't really a strict curriculum for us to follow, as it was the first year, we both were able to teach um, subjects that we were really passionate about. At the competition, we had no idea what to expect. Neither the kids nor us had been there before. But we were happily surprised when we received second place at the regional competition and qualified for states, where we received second place in Sounds of Music. The next year, both of us joined the CCSL Executive Board as curriculum coordinators. So our, basically our job was to be in charge of the curriculum and the volunteers. And since this was such a loose job description, we were able to enact any plans that we wished. Our goal was to be very meticulous by planning our sessions down to the very smallest details. We expanded mentoring to three times a week in order to allow the students to have more time to prepare for the competitions. In addition, we had one-on-one -on -one training sessions where we taught the students how to use Google Drive, make PowerPoints, and create worksheets. It seemed like a perfect plan. Nothing could go wrong. We thought we had accounted for everything. And honestly, it would have worked out. But as we soon learned, even the best laid plans don't always pan out. As the time went on, mentors were unable to complete their assignments on time for the sessions. So each week, we compensated by creating the curriculum ourselves, by pulling frequent onliners to plan for each day's events. Our plan was failing, and we ended up doing everything ourselves. We began to cut corners in classwork, and it eventually got to the point where we couldn't handle it anymore. We were really falling apart a little. Between a frustration at inactive mentors and a devotion to the kids, we knew we had to stop somewhere. The issue was that we knew that if we stopped, we would be letting the kids down. There was no one to catch our slack and we didn't want to waste the kids' time. All the mentors had developed close relationships with the kids, and the kids were always so eager to learn. This relationship is really what kept us going. We knew the kids were looking forward to the mentoring sessions, but so were we. We learned so much as mentors from the kids. First, we learned to look at the world from a kid's perspective, which is very different, and finding uh, metaphors to teach the kids complicated scientific <coughs> concepts actually taught us to understand the material more thoroughly. To be a good teacher, you need to not only understand the material, you also need to be able to predict what the kids are gonna ask about, what the kids aren't gonna understand. So you might think that your teaching is clear, but you really need to think about it from their perspective, from their point of view, and find faults with your explanations. The tricky part is, is that every student learns differently. For some students, PowerPoints and lectures are the best way. For others, games or even reading may be the best method. To account for each of these different learning styles in making your curriculum is very difficult. And we found that it's more difficult than you may even think right now. Um, it's a process that's both intrinsically complex and time consuming. We both have a newfound appreciation for teachers that we could never have gotten from anything else. You may be able to think that you can make a perfect lesson plan, and you may, but the problem is, for our program, often the people making the lesson plans are not the people who are actually gonna be teaching the material. So your plans, the, the plans that we make, need to be very meticulous. They need to be extremely detail-oriented so that anybody can look at them and teach the kids. So we found ourselves micromanaging, and that was the best way that we found that we could make sure that our plans were implemented successfully. These concepts also apply to communication within the group. 
The main issue we had as curriculum coordinators was that the new mentors didn't fully understand our directions. Plus, they were reluctant to ask for help. We assumed they'd be comfortable with the lesson plans and the time commitment. We didn't provide for flexibility, but we learned from our mistakes, and now we are moving forward. This year, we are the co-presidents of CCSO. We've expanded our program to five additional schools, um, in addition to Bartlett Middle School, which was our first program, and we affect around 60 kids um, per year. And we're about a group of around 40 mentors now. We've grown a lot. And um, we're not only involved in mentoring, but nowadays we also have a community, uh, sorry, a committee called uh, the Hopkins Undergraduate Associates of Maryland Science Olympiad. And we're also um, partnering up with uh, the student affiliates of the American Chemical Society to expose the kids to a more diverse uh, set of interests. Someday, we hope that Baltimore schools will be able to integrate STEM into their curriculum. This not only includes integrating the core subjects, such as biology, chemistry, and physics, but also integrating the more practical aspects of science, such as mechanical engineering, BME, astrology, things like that, into the elementary school level. There's a common misconception that science is an intangible concept that is only for nerds. Many students are too scared to even give it a try. But we hope that by introducing the subjects in at a young age, we will be able to eradicate this idea. But for now, our goal is to impact one student at a time. And hopefully, those students will go back to their communities and impact others. We were both passionate about science and about CCSL. And that motivated us to make a change. We urge you to find your passion. To go out and find what you love. And then share it with others. Teach what you love to someone else. And make that difference. Start that chain reaction. Someone, somewhere, sparked a light in our hearts. And we hope that we have had the opportunity to spark that candle in others too. Be that someone somewhere. Spark that interest. And share what you love with the world. Thank you.